Hey gang, welcome to another episode of the Storytellers. We have my old pal Billy Mucci Tucci. Billy Tucci. She. Yes, my brother. How are you? I Salud. am good. Oh, so, oh, well, I don't have any booze, but I'll do a diet Pepsi because I don't drink Coke. I don't drink woke Coke. I drink Pepsi now. Here, here. Well done, buddy. Well done. What's happening, bro? Thank you I for having me. My on. wallet. That's what I do. <laughs> Damn what you do, you damn tootin' you do, buddy. Uh, so I understand that you have a new project coming out soon. But before we get to that, this is the storytellers. So I have to grill you about some storytelling stuff. So I'm looking forward to it. No wham reference. I mean, no um not wham. What's the band uh that we had um Mike Turkey? Oh, aha. No aha, the aha moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, great. That's funny. So, you know what? You, uh, uh, l let's start with your um, interest in, in, in Japanese history because uh, your, your whole book and your character is, is, is steeped in that. Where did that come from? Because that, that, that's, not, that's not one of those things that's on my radar. You, you know, it really wasn't on mine until college and we had an art history class. And we learned about the woodblock prints and being the history nut that I am. I remember the professor said about Japan, this closed society, but everything changed in 1853. And what happened? Does anyone know what that is? Not thinking I raised my hand and I said, yes, that's when that's when that Commodore Perry rode into Tokyo <laughs> with yeah. the black ships and basically basically told Japan, you're opening up. Uh, and he was shocked that I knew that. Wasn't that and, when uh, Townsend, uh, what was his name? Townsend. Uh was the first uh, ambassador from the United States, Townsend. Shit, I can't remember his last name. I don't. I don't remember. No, I remember yeah, the first. The first ambassador uh, to to uh, Japan. Hmm. John Wayne played him in a John Huston movie. Oh, see, I knew that's why you'd know that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so um, I'm sorry. I'm looking over here because I got yeah, the monitors. I don't know if you do that. I've got a monitor. I got a monitor over there and, and two over here. So I'm no, always I'm looking down. around. But you're, yeah. but no, so I learned, I started to learn about the woodblock prints and I just fell in love with the simplicity of it. I love the, the starkness with the colors. And because of that, it reinvigorated my love of like Japanese cinema, samurai films and Kurosawa. You know, I still, I think, I personally, I think that, you know, arguably the seven samurai is the greatest movie of all time. You know, I just think it's such a it's such a perfect film, and and uh, and anyway, so it was really that research that got me more and more into it, and uh, and this was around the time where I'm thinking about man, maybe I'd like to get into make comic books, and I'll get into that too when you ask. But it just propelled me, and I just became like a fanatic over it. Uh, I remember when Debbie and I went to Epcot, and I think it was like '92 or something like that, and I kept having to go back to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be around, even though it's not real Japan. It's just a Japanese building, you know, Japanese looking building in, in Disney World. Right. It just, uh, it just, you know, it, it, it was just, just to be around it. I was sucking it all every little bit I could and go, started going to Japanese bookstores and buying books and things like that. And Lone Wolf and Cub. Remember when Frank Miller, when, when they put them out with the Frank Miller covers and all. Right. And I just chewed all that up. And, and, and I just, and, and the more research I did into Japan, is then the more the character progressed and how it started off as a male character and then led to become a, a Jap, uh, a female character because I just felt it was so much more compelling. And, uh, and, and uh, I was told by people, uh, namely our pal, Adam Post, who I brought she to when he had triumphant comics to publish it. He turned it down. <laughs> he said, yeah, Billy girl books don't sell. <laughs> girl books don't sell. Okay. Yeah, you know, so I'm like, and and they weren't really. I mean, you know, you had Wonder Woman had a regular series, but that was it. You know, there was they were all team on teams. And that and never sold, that. and it never really was a big seller. So I, uh, I, I said, you know, but this is the story. This is this is what's right, and and boom, you know, here I am sitting with Graham Nolan. Isn't that cool? How how that shit just. Uh, snowballs like you start with in one area and and then uh you, you, the mind starts to go ideas start to come yeah that whole creative process is such a fascinating thing because it's it's different for everybody and yeah sometimes you never know where something's going to come from yep yeah and i had that i don't know if you've struggled with it when you write uh that you're just blocked no you i struggle with nothing what's that i struggle with nothing 
Oh, thank you. Of course you don't. <laughs> awesome. That's why I'm friends with you. I don't want to struggle with anything. <laughs> But you know, I was like racking my head against the wall, adding we're adding an, another an extra twenty pages to Miss Fury. So there, there's a scene that I had, and it's a, it's 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 one of those scenes that you need some exposition, and you got to show what the bad guy is and how bad he is and what he does. Right. But it's tough to write that. You've got four pages to write that, so you you're smashing your head against the wall. You know, I'm taking walks down to the dock. I'm taking a ride by truck, trying to get it, and then. Just like yesterday, like yesterday morning, early about five thirty six o'clock, it just clicked, and I just knew what I had to do. And I and I and I'll and I'll draw it like in little pieces of paper. I had the paper back there, and if we get to that about how I write my my stories and stuff, my mm -hmm. right, thumbnails I use, and they're really rough. And it just started coming, and I was able to write that scene, those five pages in a, in in a morning. It's it's almost like you know Graham, like you said, how the the creativity it just happens. And I remember like when she came out, when it first came out in in 1994, and people calling it an overnight success. Oh, Billy Tucci, an overnight success. Like yeah, I've been starving for the past five years, you know, <laughs> doing t-shirt designs and working for, for Macy's, designing baby clothes and reworking this story, right? To, have to be an overnight success. So, <laughs> well, all, all all overnight successes uh, have all have have worked to get there. I mean, yeah. nobody just shows up, you know. Not even you. No, I never show up. That's why I'm not <laughs> overnight success. <laughs> I won't be told where to go, Billy. That's right. Hot damn. And that's why I will go where you go, buddy, because no one's telling you where to go. I know. <laughs> Somebody's gonna go with you. I'm going with Grant. <laughs> Well, we're going to have some fun at Terrific Con, that's for sure. Oh, yes, we are. Yes, we are. In two weeks, brother. Yeah. Now, yeah. now if I may, uh, I, I don't know if I could mention your name, but uh, have you spoken or made consider uh, considerations about the beautiful Mrs. Nolan to join you for that long Mrs. Trip? Nolan has other commitments, oh. uh, so she will not be joining me. All right. I think Debbie was really looking forward to having her come, even though she doesn't know her, but at least it's a... Uh, there's another yeah. woman there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about all this stuff. And she's like, <laughs> you know, because my wife is in the comics industry, right? I mean, she's deeply vetted in the comic industry for the yeah. past 25 years, but she doesn't know anything. You know, she loved 300. She loved 300. Loved it. Uh -huh. uh, that, that's the last book she's read. I don't even think she reads my book, which I know she doesn't because I throw little Easter eggs in there, like complaining about her. And she doesn't see. I'm like, well, my wife said this and. I have little cartoons in the in, in between the pa in between the panels, like in uh, Mad Magazine. <laughs> Let's see if we can. No, I... <laughs> Tucci <But>. Aragonis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I asked Sergio if when I was doing the book, the She Sideblade book, um, I'm like, how great would it be to have Sergio Aragones to do the little, you know, the little cartoons? And I'm like, can I do, let me get Sergio? And I'm like, so Sergio, remember, I got Frank Frazetta to do a cover for me. I'm working with all these great names. I got Jim Lee. I got Adam Hughes. I got, you know, all the big names in comics working on, on this book. And I approached Sergio to do, you know, to can you do the little insert? And it was at San Diego. And he's like, Billy, he goes, I get paid like $5,000 each for those. I was like, oh, oh, my God. I'm like, yeah, all right. Well, maybe not a Sergio Aragones. Uh, <laughs> Get a little cartoon wow. here. Wow. Yeah. That's when things were good. You know, I mean, think about it. Mad Magazine with that massive circulation and all. Oh, yeah. There's no doubt the guy's worth it. Tim. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. But I just couldn't afford it. Yeah. yeah you know, I had a funny uh, Sergio story. Um, and we'll get back to you in a sec. Uh, uh, he was there at the Cubert School one time. And, uh, you know, he draws all those funny little cartoons. I mean, he just blows them out. And yeah. you, know, you can do a whole page in like seconds. But Joe wanted to stress the fact that, um, you know, even though Sergio does these cute little cartoons and everything, he has a very good grasp of anatomy, right? So he tells this to the class, and Sergio's like this. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and, 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 Joe, and Joe's like, no, 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 seriously. I mean, you have an understanding of, 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 of form and, and, and drawing. And, uh, and Joe's like, I just make shit up, you know? <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> and, and Joe's starting to get that slow burn in his eyes like, hmm, help this me is, out here, man. Help me out here. You got to really <laughs> – yeah, you're not helping the cause. I remember when, 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 when DC when, – when I was doing work for DC, and we were at Baltimore Comic Con, and we had a panel, and Didio was running it, and it was Sergio on there, and me, and Sergio was doing, 
some book. I forget what it might have been Bat Lash or something he was doing. And, oh, wow. he says, you know, and I love and they have me, you know, doing this book because I love Westerns and stuff. And you have like Billy doing Sergeant Rock because Billy loves war. War? He's like, yeah, like, hey, you. I'm like, yeah, maybe I do love war. Right. Yeah, a little bit. You know, a little exactly. bit, you know. <laughs> Sanjiv Yojima, you know. Sanjiv Yojima, you know. That's it. Like sit and watch it on a screen. Like, <laughs> Billy loves war. He loves war. Oh. You're a warmonger. Yeah, yeah, apparently so. <laughs> So tell everybody about uh, your big project that's coming out. Yeah, well, I got to tell you, I'm so excited, Graham, and it's, it's so nerve-wracking, but we are launching tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on Indiegogo and Kickstarter, too, uh, the She Omnibus Volume Number 1. They're both exclusive to each other. They both have two specialized prints, really high quality gold foil lamented prints that separates them to, make, you know, to, to ensure that both campaigns are different. Um, but uh, it's five, it's 488 pages of the first 16 issues of She. So it compiles the first 12 issues of She Way of the Warrior. And then what I did was I interlaced a Tomoe miniseries written by Dan Mishkin. I don't know if you know Dan. He's brilliant. Uh, and uh, I don't know him personally, but I, but I remember his work yeah, when he was at the... Uh, yeah, tremendous, himself. tremendous. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, illustrated by Amanda Connor and inked by Jimmy Pomiati. Nice. And what I did, was, yeah, so I had this this miniseries going through as the She series was running this way, the Tomo Tomoe miniseries was running the other, telling both their perspectives of this war, and and how they started to interlace it over overlap with each other. So you saw the perspective that Anna has to fight this big hulking. His name is Gojira. This big hulking. Gojira, like yeah, yeah, this is name. This is ninety five when I came up with it. So you know, so he, she fights Gojira. And to him, he's this terrifying Hulk-like ca character, but told to the Tomo side perspective from Tomo's story, he's this giant, he's this big gentle giant who's just there to, you know, well, I'm the big guy, so I guess I'm right. ordered to, because they're all soldiers fighting in this shadow war that's existed for 500 mm -hmm. years um, before they were born. So for people that don't know she, it's sort of a modern day samurai story. And Anna is just a, uh, she's a soldier drafted into this war. As I said, the shadow war that's existed since the 15th, the 16th century. And, um, but now instead of them taking place on the big battlefields, their, their battles take place and they kill each other. They do it, you know, with swords, naginatas and stuff. But now their battlefields take place within the arts and in business and in, um, <clears throat> uh, you know the, the 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 theater. You know the entertainment. All with all laced within Japanese history. That you have these people that all belong to the society, and they and and they they warring for power for control of Japan, and uh, it's 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 fun. And the the yakuza's in it and all. And uh, so we're we've decided to put together. I've been planning this book for five years, Graham, for the very first crowdfunded campaign I wanted to do. I wanted it to be this because I didn't know what I was doing. So I go, right. well, let me put everything together. But a problem is a lot of those pages, those those discs, they were done on SideQuest discs and stuff like oh, that, yeah. and they're gone. Well, the ones, yeah, and the ones I have, they're 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 um, they're corrupted. So what we did is is we were able to scan in all the original comics, and I have Mindy Lopkin, my designer, and she is a virtuoso. What she did to make to, to all the levels she played with, I don't know how much time she spent on every page, but she's been working on that book for months and uh and finally it's all done bro it's all done it's all ready to go to press nice. um and i'm so excited about it and we launched like i said we launched tomorrow at 7 p.m uh you know eastern time we're gonna go live on um on uh, on my show at seven then we have the professional smart at eight right uh and then maybe that ends at eight eight uh eight thirty or so or i'm sorry nine 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 thirty and then i'm supposed to go on ethan's show tomorrow at uh nine thirty Oh, okay. For, for a nice Indiegogo launch, which would be tremendous. And uh, he's always been, you know, he's so selfless and he, he's he's so good with his time helping out, you know, his, mm -hmm. his friends and other creators and all. And that's what I love about it. That's why I love this community, man. We're all in this together. Yeah. You know, we're, we're all we're, trying to put out each other up. Yep. That's right. Absolutely. And, uh, and, you know, call each other out if someone's doing something that thinks a little stupid. Like, I would do that. Stay away from that, you know. And, uh, but if you're doing something right, give all the encouragement in the world and, and just give positive criticism. Always be positive. Always give critiques because we all want our books to be better. And I want to 
our books to outsell every single Marvel and DC comic. Amen. If maybe Amen. there's no reason why they can't yeah. because the bar is set so low. Right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We can. You know, I, you know, I, Ellie and Alamo did a hell of a lot more than uh, Captain America did this this past month, <laughs> hasn't it? So yeah, you know. I just I just did a whole stream on. Oh, you 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 two. I did couldn't. It. Yeah, I, I thank you for inviting me. I couldn't do it. We would just and I really wanted. it. I was like chomping at the bit. Yeah. But you know that let you know that last minute putting that campaign together. Oh yeah, yeah. You got a lot on your lot on your plate. Yeah. Hey, Hi. Kevin Freer, thank you, sir. Hey, guys, Billy, you look back at your early work with putting together reprints and whatnot. Do you look at that work critically or nostalgically? Yeah, I got to tell you, um, I, I look at it both because, A, yeah. I have, like, I'm, I was pulling out pages and stuff because we're going to add a bunch of extras and all. And, and so, let's say here, this is a page from She Way the Warrior number five, I think. Hold and on. Let me put you. It, let me put you uh, uh, I can pull the page out. Let me pull the page out. Too. I'll put you in solo layout yeah, so I'll we pull can. The page out. People can see it better. Yeah. So here you go. So there it is. And um, it's it's. I feel today, Graham, and I don't know if you feel this way. I'm sure you do. Mm -hmm. I love this. Is old school, man. This is how we did it. So we did. Look now, at is that from the first issue? The, no, number five, the fifth number issue. Five. Okay. Let's see all the word balloons. So I printed the word balloons out on my friend's Mac Macintosh two. Yeah. Um, I might have had a, 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 I think I had my Mac sixty five hundred at this time, and I was able to. I bought whiz bang font, and I was able to print it out, and then I would draw all the little lines, and I'd ink it, and then I would cut it out with an exacto knife. All the all the word balloons, you know. I did the same thing with, with the first Monster Island. Oh, did you? Oh, oh wow. yeah. I, I I printed out all my my uh, copy. Uh, and then I light boxed uh, the copy so that I could see how big to actually make the word balloons. I put the word balloons on the artwork and then paste, you know, glued the actual text, which I just razored out, uh, and, and put right into the word balloons. Oh, that's great then. Because this is, this is, this is real laborious, like, you know, this style. And oh yeah. Like I said, I really loved, I gotta tell you, I, I feel that I am a far better storyteller and draftsman today. Mm -hmm. I really do. But that passion, and this is how I would help. I, I would add these little Art Nouveau um, panel borders, which I still do to this day, which mm -hmm. kind of helps the reader, your eye automatically go from panel to panel. But the passion I had in this and working, I don't know, 20 hours a day trying to put together the best book possible, uh, it was it was a wonderful time. So I do look at it, and I, but I criticize, like, oh, God, look at that hand. You know, like, I'm looking at it now, like, look at this foot. Look at this. What's going on? I mean, that foot's not you know, not bad, but like, what's up with that? I could draw a better foot than that. <laughs> My hands are better than that today. Look at this. Right. But, uh, but it was still fun. And I, lo I love drawing hair and all. Sorry about the thing. It's the acetate. But, yeah, I, yeah. It, you know, it's it's just something that harkens back because, again, Graham, you know, like guys like you, the swells, as we called you guys, nah. the you know, the big shots, uh, you know, you guys were working, you know, doing all the big books and things like that. And, uh, but everything I was doing was all mine. You can take me out of this big. Nobody wants to see my ugly mug. Oh, we go right, yeah, let's, right. let's go doll. I looking at you. So there you go. So, uh, but it was all mine. And it's like, it's like today, like how you feel, right? I mean, you, you do another page of Alien Alamo. They, they're amazing. I love seeing, it. I love seeing the under, the under art. And then I see, love seeing your final inks over it and things like that. And when I look at it, I, I get a sense of pride with, for my friends as well, because like, this is all yours. Mm -hmm. This is all his, this is, the, everything is yours there. And, um, and again, it, it, it was a wonderful feeling. And like I said, though, you know, we could outsell them, but we actually, back in the day, we actually did start out selling them. Me, Brian Polito, we started out, you know, I think in the month of, let's just throw a number out there. I think it's say maybe July and August of 1995, we outsold every Marvel and DC book. Mm. I think the only book that outsold us was Spawn. It was crazy. Um, like it was Spawn, Lady Death, and then She, something like that. It was, But it was all three indies were the top three books. Right, right. It was a right. fantastic time. And just people were coming to us. And, and, you know, Jeff Smith was killing it with Bone. And, and you know, Jimmy and Joe did a, a Ash with Event Comics. And it was an amazing time. It, it was a wonderful time. And, and I feel that that kinship we all had has now is, is happening again today. I feel this is... This is a new golden age because it's never been easier for someone to 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 to, to be a self-publisher than it is today. 
Right. Because if you have these crowdfunded platforms, you know, I prefer, you know, if, if you prefer Indiegogo, somebody prefers, you know, Kickstarter, whatever, you have these platforms. However, though, you don't have to raise all that much money to make a printable copy. You could raise, you could have a campaign, Graham, and do for digital comic. Mm -hmm. And then that digital comic does well. And then you can then, okay, now we made the money for the digital comic. I'm going to do another campaign to make a print copy, a print copy of it. Because mm -hmm. even the Iser Awards has, the, there's Iser Awards for online comics and web comics now. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, it, digital is, 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 is big, but you can do anything and the resources are there. Because you can go to shows like this with storytellers. You can go on your regular YouTube channel when you're drawing and you're talking and stuff like that. Um, you can go on my our show, the Pop XP. We've done 400 shows. I think 350 of them have all been about crowdfunding and talking to other creators. Um, you can Google it, for God's sakes. You know, how do I make a comic book? It's there. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, you can want to yeah. dress like a baby. You could Google, I want to dress like a baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's and about the, the, the great thing you about that, you go to one of those conventions. The great thing about that is that there's no gatekeeping. Uh, you know, because if, if you believe in your idea, then uh, it, it's up to you to sell that idea. That's right. You know, as crazy, as wacky as it sounds, uh, it might be a big hit. If you yeah. like it, then there's a good chance somebody else is going to like it. Nobody yeah. is is nobody likes one thing and nobody else likes it. You know, it, that just doesn't happen. So yeah. if you can get it out there and you can sell that idea and that passion, you know, you can get it going. Absolutely, because you um you 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 also you mentioned gatekeepers, and there are gatekeepers out there now. There are people that all they do, and I post I, I made a tweet about it that they just all they their noses are in everyone else's business, their little tattletales. Hey Marvel, did you notice your artist liked uh Donald Trump post, oh. you know, a, a tweet? So like this is the crap they do. Yeah. Um and and they can try, but they don't matter to us. No. They don't matter. You you can't cancel me. I, no. I put that last year, you know, these, these, you know, Neo code, like, you know, the old, uh, co the old, uh, comics code authority thing. You're gone. They're all gone. You could try what you want, but you ain't gatekeeping us, mm -hmm. you know, because we're, we're friggin' machines, man. You know, we're, we're like secretariat. We're on, we're going and we, we we're not stopping, but we're going to hear, we're here to deliver the best books possible. And the a thing again, like we do, it's very important is you do deliver your property. You, your, right. project, your project, you have to deliver your stuff because the more you deliver, everyone that bought that book, say, will go on and buy the next one. They mm -hmm. absolutely will. They, those fans will come back. Mm -hmm. And and there's something so satisfying about, you know, we were on the show when you, uh, with Andy, uh, me and Andy were on with Ethan. Um, you weren't there. You didn't, you didn't see the, the link or something. Um, but uh, we were talking about the, the satisfaction of fulfilling. You know what a great feeling it is when you get feedback from people like I got my books today. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I got it. When, when those tweets start coming in, yeah, and, yeah that stuff is yeah. awesome. Yep, and you're yeah. like, do you mind if I retweet this? <laughs> and like, I, oh. I had I had a guy take a picture of the Shinu in downtown Tokyo. You know, he, he's holding it up and he's got this, you know, he's he took a picture of this camera and behind it is all the, the Tokyo billboards and all that kind of stuff. You know. That was really cool. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and again, it, this is what we do, man. It's, it, there's that sense of freedom. You know, we're like William Wallace on the field of uh, Sterling, you know, <laughs> or whatever it was when he gave that great speech, you know, and that's the feeling. That's what we're all feeling now. That's what we're all experiencing now. And another thing about it, what I love, Graham, is that it makes you, it holds you accountable. Um, there is no faceless distributor rep. There is no faceless retailer. You don't know which retailers are ordering your books. You are being held accountable by the readers, by the buyers. That's right. And they call you out in your shit that your book's not there. Mm -hmm. You got you got to stand up and say, you know, you're right. Or no, you oh you didn't get your book. I'm sorry. Let's check and see because stuff gets lost in the mail. Oh, you know? absolutely. You know, stuff happens, but you yep. know, it's all about uh, keeping your 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 customers happy. You yep. know, if if, if Okay, you put it in a Gemini mail, or sometimes the post office treats it like you know a soccer ball, and yeah. maybe their book got damaged. Okay, it's not your fault, it's not their fault, but you throw another one in, you send it out, and you apologize and say, Hey, I am sorry that that did yeah. not, you know, get there in time. Here's this one, and I've signed yeah. it, and you know, yeah, and, and you, you have that customer service. service. 
Yep. You have that customer service and that's, and Debbie is right on that. She's always on that. Um, and, and the people appreciate it. They do. And oh, they do it because they're, they're, for years they've been crapped on yeah. by the big two. That's you right. Know? They, they, well, they, they, they actively go after people and, yeah. and, and tell them that because you didn't buy our book, because you didn't buy our SJW rant that we're sticking out or our gender swapped superhero, uh, you're a bad person. Yeah. You're yep. intolerant. Yep. Well, that's what they did when they had the, the at the New York Comic Con. Um, let's go back four oh, years. Yeah, so. yeah, I remember. And yeah, Marvel had their retailer, mm -hmm. their their retailer summit with all the retailers in the thanks, room. Thanks, Raj. Yep. Oh, uh, hey, thanks. And uh, and people, okay, questions. And the people stood up and they were asking these questions. Why do I have to buy this book? Why are you forcing me to buy this book? Why did you change this character? Why is Iron Man now a 15-year-old girl and not Tony Stark? And Axel Alonso was there and he said, listen, Marvel doesn't make comics for the people that are in your store. Marvel makes comics for the people outside your store looking in. Like the people that go to the movies and they love the Avengers. They want to come in and want to buy those comics. And then one retailer stood up and said, yeah, but those Avengers aren't in my comics, aren't in your comics anymore. Right. They're coming in to look for Iron Man, Tony Stark, and as a little girl, you know? You couldn't make make her another character and, and just have the new Tony Stark. You can't write the movies make billions of dollars and Iron Man selling thirty thousand copies. Are you kidding me? The movie makes a billion dollars and the, and they can't sell more than fifty thousand copies of Iron Man. When Robert Downey mm -hmm. Jr. is arguably the biggest rock you know movie star on the face of the earth at that time, right? And right. it's just because and so then what happened? There was a big revolt, not a revolt, but the people just asking questions and Marvel shut it down. They didn't want to hear of it. And then when Marvel posted, it was one of the news sites, maybe Newsarama or something, and uh, the, the Mar Marvel marketing guy, David, said, uh, well, it, it's pretty clear to us that, that comic fans do not want uh, – that, that um, fans do not want diversity in comics. And that's yeah. such bullshit. Everyone loves diversity in comics. So sure. just go th shove it down people's throat and take these characters at, for a gimmick – and and make Captain America say Hail Hydra. Mm -hmm. Even if you're getting somewhere, you failed at that. You failed mm -hmm. at the point because when people know there's a ruse, remember like the old great, you know, the old great, uh, you know, covers. You know, look at the co covers, and there's you know, Sergeant Rock is aiming at at easy come at American soldiers. Right. Oh my God, Sergeant Rock's turned Nazi, and then you find out it's a fake Sergeant Rock or something. You know what I mean? Right. It's a German right. dressing with his helmet on. Right. You know that's exactly. like, that's in the it's in the one issue. It explains yeah. what happens. No, they think they're smart or they think they're tricky or they think they're they're hip or whatever it is snarky that they are. Oh no, Cap's really not part of Hydra. Cap Cap doesn't Cap really does believe in the American dream. Even though there's a panel of him referring to it like you were talking about, you know that, you know, I can't believe I said those words when Frank Miller drew it right. in the book right. with David Michelinney where he said, you know, that I that I believe in the, the one thing I believe in it, you know, I I believe in the dream. Yeah. Whatever he said, right. and, and there's Cap saying, "I can't believe I didn't say. I can't believe I said those words." Yeah. And then whatever he's doing, four pages later, maybe then he tries to write himself out of it, you know. But no, you they know, don't. Oh, no, he, he, and you he, don't. And he you fail. All in. Yeah, because you failed at that. You yeah. whoever what yeah. it is that you wrote it. Because I read the, that book. I read those pages, and I'm like, it just comes across like this is what it is. And now he's trying to play catch up. Mm -hmm. Now they they thought they were they thought they were being cute and slick. And given, like you said, the the uh, the writer's own personal point of view is shining yeah. through in Captain America when you don't own that character, you didn't yeah. create that character. That's what um, my whole uh, uh, po uh, show was about the other day was was when ideology overtakes story and overtakes the character. Now yeah. you know people could say, oh yeah, but you know it, it's it, it's a stunt to sell comics. Okay, granted, it's a stunt to sell comics, but you uh, like like Nightfall where we took Batman out and replaced Batman with another guy was a stunt to sell comics. Yes. Yeah. But what we never did was we never changed Batman from who he was. Right. You know, bat the character of Bruce Wayne was always that great knight K N I G H T, you know, who was eventually everybody knows he's going to get back in the fight. Just like you knew that Superman was not really dead. Right. We never changed him and, and made him ever doubt his vow to his parents. You know, if if there's any two characters whose ideology uh, or, or rather their belief system is so inculcated into who they are, 
mm-hmm. in Batman and Captain America. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's why those two people can't be replaced by somebody else because right. it's their it's their belief system that makes them who they are. Yeah. It's their well, their life you know, experiences. You know what it is though, too? These people, the these fans or these writers, if they had ever if they lived in the Marvel universe or the DC universe, let's say, they would hate Bruce Wayne. They would hate Steve Rogers, a soldier from the 40s, you know, what I mean? that believes in the red, white, and blue. And, you know, hey, so, you know, got my little bird mm. right here. You know what I mean? They would despise him. You know, they, they, they would despise Robert Kennedy today, these people. And 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 so you get you get these writers, whatever now they're all putting their own their own warped sense, uh, sense of uh, their, their warped point of view of what the country is or what the country's gone through or what the country should be. These spoiled brats that were, you know, that, that are now stand, piss, standing on the shoulders of giants and pissing on their heads. Yeah. And they're taking over stories by men that fought real Nazis, men that, that whose families were killed in the Holocaust by the Nazis. That's right. These, you know, these creators. And then the ones that took the mantle and respected that. You could say whatever you want about Neil Adams, you know, today and stuff. He gets a little crazy sometimes and all. But Neil respected Bruce Wayne and what he did with that character. He did all through his one from the 1960s on. Um, Denny O'Neill, you know, I would talk to people that were friends with Denny O'Neill. Mm-hmm. I have comic creators, uh, you know, old timers that were on complete opposite end of the spectrum. Um, some of them are gone now, and I'm not going to say who they are because, you know, uh, that told that it disagreed with Denny O'Neill on everything. But they worked together. They put together some of the most gr- the greatest comics of all time. Yeah. You, you know, and, and and the thing with the Captain America, you know, pop, comics were always political. Um, you know, everybody, you know, um, when Captain America was shown punching a Nazi, you know, nine months before we got into Pearl Harbor, you know, and that's true. Right. But the thing is, is that everyone hated Adolf Hitler then. They just right. didn't want to go to war in, in, to fight for France. You know, the, the, we're just coming out of the Depression. People, for the most part, were against it. No one also knew, though, what those creators knew. So you could have Jack Kirby, you know, let's just take Kirby's family, right? Or Joe Simon's family or, or Joe, you know, that, that their family, they have family in Europe. And the letters get through and they're telling what's happening. We had this conversation. Yeah. It, was, it was all yeah. you. Uh, so yeah. I, I'm, I'm doing Graham Nolan right now. You're doing a great job. Uh, thank you. But no, you were 100 percent right saying so these people knew what was going on. They, they knew the stories that people were being hurt into ghettos or taken away to, to work camps or camps, yeah. you know. Um, but The New York Times wasn't covering this. The New York Times wasn't talking about this. The New York Times, you know, they, they were lauding Hitler a year before, you know, mm-hmm. as, as doing such great things for Germany and crap like that so these creators as you said they had an inside scoop of what was really happening mm-hmm. and they knew what was going on the horizon and trust me if that captain america captain america punching out of hitler was looked what was looked down upon by the general populace and the kids didn't like that and everyone loved hitler people thought hitler was cool they would never have been a captain america number two well i was just about to say this and then uh sardi just uh Took the wind out of my sails, but this is exactly what I was going to say. Comics was good versus bad. Universal truths, not leftist SJW fetish politics. Yeah, that's that's the difference. It's like they say, oh, they're always political. It's like no, they weren't political in the sense that you know they were taking sides uh, yeah. and, and alienating other people. They were universal truths that everybody could get behind. Right, and they would they would they they were they were social commentary. That's what they mm-hmm. were. Comics were a reflection of what was happening in society. Mm-hmm. These people are trying to make, create the narrative. They're mm-hmm. trying to create the thing, making, you know, the president of the United States a villain, you know, with Trump. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and so so that's what's going on, I think. Mm-hmm. And it's a very small, minute, uh, very vocal minority that is pushing their, you know, pushing that agenda. Mm-hmm. And now they've infested comics. Yeah. They have. Yeah. And, and they've gotten into positions of power. Yeah, yeah. And you want to talk about overnight successes? Those are overnight successes. Oh, they yeah. work some shit to get where they are. That's right. They posted a few things. If they got a salon article or whatever the heck they're doing, yeah. you know, or t- tweeting on you know on their phones every day or uh, you know, posting on you know Tumblr and crap like that. They're yeah. getting giant, they're getting big books now. They're, and, they're and, influencers and now now they've got uh, jobs. Yep. Yeah, yeah. They're influencing the industry right into the turlet. That's a that's a darn sure. Oh, absolutely. I mean, 
I don't even, you know, we used, we used to refer to it as playing in the sandbox, uh, you know, because we knew we never were going to own these characters, but we loved them growing up and, and enjoyed drawing them growing up and, and wanted to, you know, tell stories within the frameworks that were created by these giants, you know, and, yep. and the companies had gatekeepers, you know, like Denny O'Neill was the gatekeeper of bat, everything Batman. And uh, so he knew what was acceptable, and what was not acceptable. And so he would tell writers to change this because we're not doing that with Batman or, you know, that's your own view. You know, it doesn't happen. We are at a, uh, I just posted a picture uh, from the 1994 Bat Summit at the Mohunk I Mountain. I saw that. Rock. It was great. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what I didn't have a picture of was we were sitting outside on an outdoor uh, patio area. And um, I think Gorf came with a package that was sent up there from D.C. Uh, to Denny. And it's from Frank Miller. And he opens it up, and it's the uh, revised script for the Batman Spawn book that was going to be done. Now, Denny had sent edit, uh, editorial notes because you know, things weren't, weren't right. And I'd never seen Denny like this. It's like he, he, he picks it up, and his face goes like this as he's reading. He goes... <laughs> That motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> he was furious. <laughs> yeah, but he earned that, Ma. He earned that right to say, to, to call Todd that motherfucker. No, he it wasn't Todd. He was calling Frank that. Oh, Frank. Sorry, Frank Miller. Frank Miller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, because Frank was, was sticking it to him. He didn't like the editorial changes like, you know, Batman, uh, you know, uh, throwing these... Uh, bat spikes into people's necks and stuff like that, oh, you know, geez. Oh, geez. you know, just, you know, this ultra violent Batman, you know, yeah. that was, you know, no better than the bad guys, you know, the Batman we have today. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, Frank did it again. If you remember Frank, what the heck is that? Oh, I got a grasshopper came in my house. Where yeah. do these bugs come from? <laughs> Look at that. Alien Alamo. Oh my God. Now I got to release them. You give me a second to release them outside my little balcony there. Go ahead. All right, I got about. I'm on my third floor. I got a little balcony. Let me take. I don't want you killing him on my. No, street. I'm not going to kill him. Come on, folks. If you hear a squishing noise, it means he didn't make it to the I balcony. It's my grasshopper season. <laughs> Crunch. We're, st you know, my uh, my bugs in my alien Alamo are based on stink bugs. Um, in the Northeast, around September time. These damn things, it's like an alien Alamo. I mean, these stinky little, they're these little bugs. And if you squish them, they let out this stinky stink, you stink know. Bugs. Uh, stink yeah. bugs. Yeah. yeah you get, yeah. I get stink bugs flying around my studio. I don't know where the oh, hell they came from. God. Yeah. They they came from China. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Mm. They're, 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 it's like, it, it's this huge infestation around September. And I got to, and they're attracted to things that are white. So, like, when the sun is on the house, man, sometimes, like, in September, the whole freaking porch is filled with these things. And I got to go out there with the spray and, and spray around the windows and doors and stuff like that to try and keep them from coming in. Because once the weather cools, they try to sneak into the house and then they go dormant. Oh, yes. Yes. And then and they then wake them up in, in the spring and, and, and summer, you know. And you just see like, right, you're trying to work, you get, and, like, you have your light box on. Yes. And they hit, yeah. and you're like, what the and I still catch him. I throw him outside, though. I throw him down the toilet and send him back to China. I, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. There you take that, Chai Comms. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. So, yeah. So, that's that's my rant. That's Billy's rant. Yeah, that's okay. You you, you can rant. Oh, so look at that. So, you, so uh, Jerry, yeah, Jerry, now, Jerry Lang lives in Buffalo and... Uh, or somewhere around there, uh, and they are everywhere. It, it, they really—that—that's what gave me the idea for the design of these things. Oh, hey, really? That's that's awesome. Hyper Kaiju hates commie bugs. Who doesn't? <laughs> Who doesn't? You could take out bugs, and you could, you know, just say hate commie. Commies ain't cool. That's for <laughs> sure. That's right. <laughs> Commies ain't cool. No way. Oh, oh Greg, at, at Greg Atkins got to smoke a cigar with you at a hotel. There you go. Was that oh, in, uh, cool. in Knoxville? I'm not sure. Where was that, Greg? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got to smoke a cigar with you with you a couple of times at a hotel. Oh, Looking yeah. Looking forward to it at Terrific Con in uh, 
in uh, where is it? It's in uh, Connecticut. Yeah, Uncleville or something. Uh, Uncleville. Uncleville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, don't so forget so your uh, don't forget your Hawaiian shirt. No, I won't. I won't. It's yeah. all ready to go. I talked to Rock and Damo. They're all excited. So we'll do that. But yeah. it's going to be an interesting time because we have a lot of our friends, our colleagues. It's going to be a big show. You got some, you know, the, some interesting folks coming. <laughs> and, uh, I feel they're going to be wanting to talk. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> Looking forward to it. That's going to yeah. be a hoot. It is going to be a hoot, you know. Uh, yeah. I, I keep telling some of these folks, you know, you got to start positioning yourself, yeah. you know, because the jobs are going to dry up for you. Yeah, it's it's a, well, they are. They're coming around. I don't know about you, but you know, I again, I've been real fortunate to 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 make so many friends in in the industry, mm -hmm. and a lot of my friends, and they don't agree with with me, say whatever my political leanings may be here or there, but um, but I'm still friends with them. I can't tell you how many of them. It's got to be at least once a week. It was more during COVID. How do I do this? How do I do a Kickstarter? Help me, help me, you know, give me some, some tips and advice on how to do an Indiegogo. Well, they all want to do Kickstarter. None of them want to do Indiegogos. So they're like, I want to do a Kickstarter. I want to do a Kickstarter. I'm like, watch my show. We got 400, you know, 350 shows on the Pop XP. You can watch that. Right. Said, if I have to tell you, you're never going to do it. Because mm -hmm. it's a lot of work, and you know, and and I was fortunate enough to have you know, you know, Brian Polito helped Debbie and I, and Jimmy Pomiati helped us, and Ethan helped us tremendously, mm -hmm. and you know, but they're real friends. He's a guy that I haven't talked to in fifteen years, right? And then all of a sudden, give, give me advice. What? Yeah. Oh, well, how about the friends you thought you had, and then when they found oh. out that uh, uh, you know you were doing what you're doing, they're like, uh, you know, oh, oh no, you're toxic. You know, you're oh yeah, oh yeah, SPW, You know, oh no, no. Your your, your well, comic skate. Well, no. the funny the funny thing is, is that you can't find me saying a bad thing about anyone in comics anywhere. And I know they've tried, you know. But you you just put on a great face, you smile, you laugh at them. They can go off on their little crazy, t you know, rants and and temper tantrums and all, and like, <laughs> you're cute, you're cute. <laughs> <laughs> you want a beer? I'm getting a beer. I'll buy you a beer because I got that kind of cash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I'm making money. That's right. I'm making money. You keep you keep, pencils down. You keep so you keep defending Marvel and DC That's after, right. they, uh, after how much shit how they treat you like shit. But then again, secretly, everything that we kind of say publicly, they all agree with, and they just terrified. there are there are a lot of guys that that They're are terrified like that. to say they, it. they won't say it out loud because they don't yeah. want to be ostracized by the you know the the in crowd or whatever. And that's it what it is. But it's yeah. But it's it's so funny how this in crowd of these people that don't buy comics to begin with. Mm -hmm. You know the, the the fans that are the that the, these so called wannabe gatekeepers and these loud mouths and these tattletales and all this mm -hmm. crap. They don't buy comics. Well, I'm they talking about the guys that work in the business. Oh, you know, yeah. it's like you know yeah. they're the ones that you know they don't want to associate with you, or they or or they don't want to actually the the people that believe like we're talking about, but don't want to say it publicly. It isn't because of their fans. It's because of the people they work with too. They don't want to yeah. say it. They, you know, they they're afraid that they'll lose their friendships with such and such. You yeah. know, I've got I've got some wonderful friends that are completely to so far left that you wouldn't believe. But yeah. we have a, we have a lot in common too. You know, like mm -hmm. uh, when I had to, one of my early guests was Howard Chaykin. Now Howard yeah. it couldn't be any more different than me. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to agree on politics. Uh, but we are going to have a really great conversation about Gil Kane and about yeah. storytelling and about, you know, the the uh, the concept of, you know, uh, creating narrative pictures, uh, those kind of things that we can connect on. So why should we argue about what I did in the voters booth and what you did in the voters booth yeah. and what ideology we're in? Who gives a fuck? You yeah. know, and, and, and the thing, too, is that they you're never going to change my mind and I'm never going to change your mind. And right. you couldn't believe, and I don't care. I'll tell people I voted for Trump twice, and yeah. so did my wife. And you should have saw. Well, what other choice did you have? Right, exactly. And I was talking to another guy. He's a comics writer. He's a writer, and he's a, and he has um he, he he's a longtime news guy, comics news guy, and and he voted for Trump twice too. He's like, yeah, what well, was a choice, you know? And uh, but you should see the hurt of people that found out that Debbie, it was, you guys are so smart. You know, I can. You voted for Trump. That was like twice. You know, like they shocked because they they had this perception. Because I'm like, wow. I'm like, a lot of your other friends voted for him too, and they don't want to tell you because of this very reaction. 
Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. then again, Graham, and, uh, when I was working at, at DC and I had just come off an Eisner nod, um, I was uh, on fire doing so much. Every, every book I was doing got great reviews. Um, uh, and I remember a big project came up and they wanted me to draw it. And one of my friends is a, is a famous writer, brought, you know, brought it to, 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 to DC and like, we should get Billy Tucci to do this. Billy's perfect for this. This could be great. And the guy said, Tucci. And he's like, fuck him. And the guy's like, what, what's wrong with Billy? And he goes, he's like, no, I like Billy and all, but the guy's a fucking Republican. Yeah. That's 2012. Somebody said that at DC? That, at, at DC. That's 2012. This is before, this is when Romney was, was running. Right. This is, you know what I mean? That's the thing. You know, so it, it was so crazy because when Obama became president, that's when everything turned. Because if you criticize a public servant, they took it personally. Mm-hmm. You right. like wounded them almost. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it was like. Even was though you might be only criticizing policy. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's all we, doing. Weren't, yeah. we weren't doing big baby blow up dolls of 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 Obama the way they did with Trump uh, right. and humiliating imagery. Uh, uh, what's the name? Kathy Griffin with a uh, severed head and yes. all that. Can you imagine if you did that stuff? You oh, know, my God. We, we criticize policy. Yeah, exactly. And if you say, I don't think the guy's a good president. I'm sorry. Yeah. What do you like that? he's doing? Oh, my God. It's so historical. Yeah. But what do you like what he's doing? Yeah. Oh, well, you know, he's, he's doing this, he's doing that. You know, I'm like, is he, is he doing that? Did you, did you, where'd you get that from? Is that what he's, you know? And I'm like, look, look at the unemployment, look at the deficit. I mean, the debt, you know, mm-hmm. what are you kidding me? Look, look at our standing in the world, uh, whatever. Right. Anyway, yeah. I think he's a nice guy, I'm sure. But I just thought he was yeah. a shitty president. Yeah. <laughs> I thought the same way about uh, Jimmy Carter, you know, I didn't like yeah. standing in gas lines. I thought he was, a, he, he's, he's a wonderful God fearing man, but he was a bad president. Yeah, you know. I'm sorry, some people just aren't either they're career not politicians or they're just not qualified to be president. You're not a good president. But he's a great human being. Yeah. You know. Now, Bill Clinton was a pretty decent president. Uh the, if you look at our economy when he was when he was in there. Um, but he, he made a lot of crappy mistakes too. But as well, a human imagine. being, not so great. <laughs> yeah, he's a scumbag. Yeah, exactly. He's a, he really is. Yeah. Anyway. Man, Joe, then, thank story you story. for the ten dollars super chat, sir. Hey, Joe, yeah, we're looking forward to having you on art and stuff this Monday the nineteenth. RT Bear on the twenty third. We've had Billy and Frega on almost all the professionals now. All right, now you got to get you, you got to get Aaron and Andy. Yes, and then you'll have uh, the entire gang. And then we'll see if Aaron can piss you off. <laughs> if you get Aaron on, say yeah, and if, what we yeah, do name again. <laughs> Yeah, if you guys watch the professionals, um, and we have it tomorrow night at at at, at uh, eight p.m., we talk about Ocon stories, and and for someone who's so nice and quiet as Aaron, he sure pisses off a lot of pros and like legends. He just says the wrong things, or he does, <laughs> and he's like, right? He's so self depreciating. He's like, yeah, like oh yeah, hey, Aaron's one of the nicest guys in the world. It's so but funny. He just, he just stumbles, stumbles his way through cons and just pissing off comic book legends and all. <laughs> That's great. Dr. Mass, thank you, sir. Hail Dr. the fan team blaming DC and Marvel and the writers for destroying our childhood. Should the artists agreeing to do these books take some blame too? Uh, personally, I, 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 I say yes. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of things, though, is when you're working for the big two, uh, you're not making a lot of money. Um, and a lot of these artists as well are from overseas too. So I don't think they get it or they care about our politics whatsoever. Right. Um, so that's my point on that. That's, that's yeah. my belief in that. I, uh, I mean, you know, the other side is, 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 is um, the, the content of the story is coming from the writers and editorial. Uh, the imagery is coming from the artist. Now, if the artist is putting imagery in there, that's offensive uh, or, or uh, hyping up, the, the stuff that we think is crap in the writing, well, then, yes, they have to take the blame. Otherwise, you're, they're pretty much in there just, uh, you know, trying yeah, to make... Yeah, that one guy that wrote that story. thing about Jews and all. There was two artists that wrote things, that very anti-Semitic uh, uh, stuff they wrote in there. One guy wrote... And the artist slipped them in. It wasn't the writers at all. It was the artists that... And I, I think they were both Muslim artists, and they wrote, like, this anti-Semitic stuff in the comics. Wow. Like, ah. Never a dull, never a dull moment in comics, huh, buddy? That's for sure. <laughs> Just the comics get dull. <laughs> Hyper Kaiju wants to know where is the professionals tomorrow? That's a good. Uh, I got, I got the professionals tomorrow, and no. I'd like to do 
us, uh, the professionals, draw the Rocketeer. Mm. Because it, it is the uh, 30th anniversary of the Rocketeer film. Um, and this Ju July 29th is, is, would have been uh, Dave Stevens' let's see, maybe 64th birthday, I think. But I, it would be nice to celebrate him, talk about the Rocketeer, maybe sketch a little if you want. Uh, I think it'd be a fun, fun show. Okay, and Billy Campbell, Billy Campbell, the Rocketeer, has agreed to come on the Pop XP. Oh, really? So, yeah, yeah. So I got to hang out with him a few about a decade ago in, in London at a convention or 2014, and it was glorious. Wow, we had so cool. much fun. It, 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 what, a, what a mensch. What a great guy. He was in a great TV show that my wife and I loved, and it lasted less than a season. Uh, what was it? Moon over Miami? I don't know. I didn't see I think it. it was. Uh, it was like in the early 90s. Um, it was after Rocketeer, and it yeah. was after Crime Story. Uh, but uh, he's yeah. great. he's not an ass kisser. He doesn't really care, you know. Um, he's not a, you know, a Hollywood follower or anything like that. He's his real own, his, his own man, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, he loves a sail. He has, he has a, uh, he, he goes on sailing ships and they set like, like wooden ships. And, and he has his crew of buddies that he has brothers and sisters, I guess. And they, they'll sail <laughs> like from, from, you know, New York to, to Cape of Good Hope on a sailing ship. That's cool. Yeah, over three months or so. It's it's fan, it's it's amazing. What a fascinating life he has. Wow. And he's like, yeah, you know. Yeah, he was in the four the forty four hundred. He was in that too. Oh, was he? Made, okay. Yeah, he made some good money. So, you know, he doesn't seem to be he seems a very humble guy, yeah. you know. So uh I'm sure he could he could have had a lot more than than he has if he really wanted it. I think he's just like, yeah. <laughs> Sad you know? Zero gives us twenty bucks to buy some beers, Billy. For this talk, I have to buy you and Billy a beer for when you got to get get together. Who says there are no more heroes? Oh well, thank you, Statistical Zero. I look forward to that. Yes, yes, and and he obviously knows the price of beers at the uh, casino. That's right, because that's, that's one. It's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll we'll no. share that pint. Yeah, they got that great Irish bar over there, so we'll hit that place. Yeah, yeah. and um, thanks, Dad. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Zero. And uh, and then we have uh, well, I'd like to go to a nice. Debbie wants to go to a nice restaurant. Uh, so we, of course, you're. I don't know if you got all your nights uh, solidified or or plans made. Nope. nope. But this it's gonna be a lot of great guys, a lot of great guys and gals, a lot of great comic people there. It's a fantastic yeah. show. It is, and, and there's so much to do around there. And I kind of hope it's raining out because then we'd have to leave. Because you don't have to leave anyway. I mean, there's so much restaurants and, and all. And oh, I'm well, so I've sad. That Mrs. Nolan isn't coming. That sucks. Yeah, I, I've never left the the casino to nope. to go someplace to eat. You know, because nope. it's it, it's it's actually in the middle of nowhere. So yeah. <laughs> you know, if, if you're yeah. gonna Uber somewhere, you're gonna have to go. Yeah, I don't even know where. Right, and you go for a walk, you get lost in the in the woods. Of, uh, yeah, you're pretty in, much. You're in the middle of a of an Indian reservation, so it, it's all hills yeah. and mountains and and woods they, and stuff like they that. They got a nice river or lake there. I keep seeing from my windows. I'm like, geez, I should bring my fishing pole, dude. I could bring some fishing stuff if you want. If we could walk down there, yeah, I don't know. If you can. and 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 uh, fish. I'll do that. I'll bring my little freshwater pole. It'll set up. I'll see what I, I got. If you can. Grab some. Um, I don't know what do they got. They probably got trout there. So. I don't know, grab some worms, right? Or yeah. you, you like to uh, retrieve? What's your what's your way of fishing for your bass when you're catching them bass? Uh, I use live bait uh, in the group. Yeah, yeah. So you got a bobber and you just let it float, or are you you know is that what you do? No, no. I just uh, I throw a um, a leech or or a crayfish on a hook and I let it drop down to the bottom and just wait. And you know the the fish or the leech or whatever moves around and then the fish sees it and. Goes on it, you know. All right. So you have do you have like a little swivel, like a little um you put your weight on the on the swivel. What's that called? So the weight's on the bottom and you and your your little a, leader? Fish, a what? A leader? Yeah, the little leader, you know, the little yeah. fish finder, you know, where it hits at the bottom like that. It, like I gotta know your setup and I'll set up with, just like you. You know what? If you got the room, bring your fishing pole, bring your stuff, I'll bring mine. All right. We'll head out of Saturday morning and fish. Or maybe we won't. <laughs> So what is vision? Yeah, but that'd be fun. Check out that river down there. Yeah. Well, okay, Pastmaster Dan. Uh, that's a good good question. <laughs> uh, we, 
<clears throat> what do you that tell us when crime families become administrators? Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Marty Weber, we're talking about Terrificon. Yes. Uh, which is in two weeks uh, at the uh, um, Mohegan Sun Casino in Connecticut. Uh, I release. Yeah, why don't you eat them bats? Well, bass aren't good eating, first off. Small the, the, bass. You get small mouths, that's right. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. The, the bass is, you know, uh, ocean bass is, is good. Yeah. But small mouth, or, but no, nah, that's not good. And, you know, these are bass that have been out in Lake Erie. I'm not eating anything. I uh, can't yeah. Lake Erie. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, we'll get uh, release. Yeah, why I, not? I've got some fish that I've caught that have had tumors on them. You oh, know, geez. I call them Frankenfish. Oh, you my know. God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fish. Not good. Not okay, good. Terrific. Jasper playing that he wanted to go to Terrificon, but he's going to Megacon and said, I was supposed to go to Megacon, but uh, they changed the dates because of um, this year because of COVID. So they moved it to August uh, when it was supposed to be in May. Uh, so uh, I had to bail on that because I got too much going on as I get ready towards fulfillment and stuff. Uh and I will be at Megacon in 2022 in the spring. Yeah, those guys don't like me. They don't invite me to anything, the Fan Expo people. Well, they don't pay any appearance fees either. You yeah, know, they don't even they don't even invite me even. They have nothing. So I'm like, oh well. You know, the uh, somebody from that thing uh, talked to Renee because Renee's my rep, and they said, uh, you know, I just want to ask you a question because I've heard that uh, Graham comes to these shows with guns. Is that true? And she's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I come from New York. I'm flying in from New York. How yeah. the hell am I going yeah. to get a gun into a, into a convention? And why would I bring one in the first place? You know? Exactly. Here, here. But, you know, but the guy had heard I was a conservative and a, a, a NRA guy or something like that. And then I think he was tossing that out just to see what would happen. Can you believe that? That's funny. Yeah, and Mike, Mike Gold, Michael Golden's actually the one that brings guns to conventions. Yeah, <laughs> that's not true either. <laughs> no, it's not true. But, but Michael's a great guy. What yeah. an incredible artist. Yeah, Nicholas Gear said, "Oh, we're going to get a Tucci Trooper jersey tomorrow with the campaign." I don't think so. I think we're going to save the Tucci Trooper jersey for the next convent for for the uh, our uh, Shisakora um, uh, October campaign. It's just a lot of work trying to get it all designed and all, and we want this. We want this campaign to be lickety split and lightning fast. So, what is your uh, fulfillment date on this? Since you uh, November, it? November, but we're looking to get it get it start fulfilling in September. He said the book's done, so right. we're in August. Send it to the printer in August. Get get it in September. Start fulfilling it in September, but we have a, a, a November law, a, a November date to fulfill. Fantastic! I like that date. I like getting out early. Great. Yeah, that's exactly it to, to to get it out early. But uh, it's a lot of fun, and I could I don't know if you want me to share, unless you want to yeah. talk. You know, your I know you have because I watch your show, so I know you have your questions, and I'm we're totally going off a tangent. The whole thing. No, 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 no. This show's a little different because I know you had you, you, your stuff launching, and you know I, I wanted to give you a platform to talk about it and 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 tell folks about it. And oh, and by the way, gang, um, in the description is the link to Billy's sign up sheet. So if you haven't backed any of his projects or anything, you can sign up for this and um, that you'll get all the information about when it launches, all the goodies and, and, and all the stuff. So you'll get on his mailing list and please do that. Please consider doing that so he can stay in touch with you. Yeah. So, yeah. So there's our campaign. There it is. This is the launch of it. Uh, it's not quite done. Obviously, it'll be done by tomorrow. But uh, we got my little video. Um, I don't know if I can click the video because I didn't share the audio. That's stupid of me to do. You know what? You know, Graham, when you do your own shows, you, you get everything right. And then when I, when I, uh, let me stop sharing it real quick. I'm going to stop screaming. I'll share it again and I'll share the audio because you see my, my video that Nile Scala put together. Good old Nile. Good job, Nile. Oh, thank you so much. Let me do it. Well done, JP. Yep. Hang on, buddy. Chrome tab. I'm still getting used to this. PC. Billy, hey, you have copies you of your previous she books. Uh, do you have uh, of the uh, Return of the Warrior? We have Return of the Warrior and Haikyo. We have very few of them left. We have some hard covers. They will be offered. They will be offered on the new uh, campaign. Um, you'll be able to buy the hardcover editions. We have very few of the soft cover variants, but we'll be putting those up on our website next week. 
Oh, there you go, gang. So uh, if you missed out on it. Very the few. There's like 10, 15 of each left. That's it. Oh, okay. I wanted the, I wanted them to be rare. Get them to the creators. You know, get them to the artists. And then like, wow, we got 10, 15, 20 copies of these. Well, let's save them for shows in the website. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, okay. you can share now, Graham, if you don't want Yeah, so there you go. So if, if we, uh, here's my video. Here's my little uh, thing. Let's see. Can you click the full screen? Yeah. There you go. Now I'll click full screen and it should be. I don't know if that did it. Hello everyone, creator of She, Billy Chuchi here, and I am so, so proud to announce the debut launch of our very first Omnibus edition, the She Omnibus volume number one. The groundbreaking masterwork that literally changed the face of comics and launched the Bad Girl Revolution returns in this premiere formatted 500 page full color hardcover edition collecting all. Can you mute your mic, Billy? We're getting the feedback. Warrior, Sorry, yeah. Three part interlacing Tomoe miniseries. There we go. And the 48 page She versus Tomoe celebrating the 25th anniversary of this epic crossover classic. This modern-day Sohai warrior saga introduces Anna Ishikawa, a young woman born of two cultures and who was drafted into a shadow war that has existed for over 500 years. In this complete full-color omnibus, we follow Anna as she begins her violent assault on the Yakuza Oyoban Masahiro Arashi. But after several fiery clashes and witnessing the grieving children of those she slain in battle, Anna turns away from the sword. Now the hunter becomes the hunted, as Arashi seeks his own revenge against this faceless assailant. And his answer is Anna's family's centuries-old enemy, the Naren Sohai, led by her best friend, the assassin Tomoe. Heartbreaking twists and exhilarating turns ensue as Anna's mission unravels into one of blood and madness, and whose culmination's only salvation is mercy and forgiveness. But wait, there's more. We're also offering lots of other shoe related items, including original art, prints, shirts, commissions, and special editions, including the ash can to She's Next Great Adventure, launching this October, She Sakura. And the best news is, this entire collection is complete and ready for press. We just need your help to get it funded. So please, join our crusade and harken back to the days when comics were fun and thought-provoking. So please pledge, please share, Thank you for 25 amazing years in comics. And remember, we're all in this together and we're all she's strong. Salute. <laughs> it's hard doing that, you know, because you you want to like, I'm, I'm not an actor, you know. Uh, so you're, what? Trying to, you're trying to come up with everything and talk about it and stuff. And I wrote a script, but of course I go off script. And it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something comes to you and you're like, oh, yeah. And then then it's hard to get back on script. Yeah, and I said 500 pages. It's not 500 pages. 12 pages shy of that. Well, you have end sheets, so maybe it's six pages shy of 500. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, so I'm, I'm psyched. I'm nervous. Debbie's nervous. We hope it does well. And, um, and again, maybe I'll, if, if it's okay, I'll share the uh, – I'll, I'll find the uh, the link to the uh, to our pre-launch page, if you guys wouldn't mind going on that. And uh, it, it's I'm, – I'm so excited because I want to see this book myself, Graham. You know, I want to hold this – you know, 488 page hardcover comic of, of the, you know, of the, the, the book I made when I was a mere lark, you know, in right. my twenties. My so it's kind of, it's cool, man. It's, it's, it's now, good what times, man. That I'm sharing here, bud. Say again. Uh, oh, there I, it is. Okay. I was going to share the, um, just the, uh, the preview page just so okay. people see it. Let me, let me jump on that. Let me get to that. There it is. Nope. That's a, that's sorry. That's the pre-launch page I want to show. Right. Uh, let me go to that. Oh, it's so complicated. We had that terrible. Um, where is it? Okay, let's see it. View your pre-launch page. There you go. So, uh, all yeah. right, let me share that. Let me go back into the other thing. Buddy, you got it. Thank you. You're a step ahead of me, buddy. There you go. So there you go. That's my, um, you got Candace's. Don't be nervous. Oh, thank you, Candace. Yep, so there's our little pre-launch page. And you guys could sign mm -hmm. up. Uh, we're trying to, to work prices that we can have like a first 24 hour 
um, uh, 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 like a special for the first 24 hours. Don't know if we're going to be able to get to that in time, but um, you sign up and we'll send you all kinds of, you know, all news and things like that for our big launch tomorrow. We're going to have fun and, with it. Uh, um, what, what, how much is the book? Uh, for oh, just the book, 60 bucks, 60 bucks. 60. Okay. It's so expensive. Oh my gosh. You know, you don't realize how expensive a big book. Well, you know, you know, a big book like that. Mm. And, uh, and you know, and when, you know, putting on nice heavy stock, I think it's 80 pound paper interiors, mm -hmm. um, with, with a dust. Well, the dust jacket would do is a stretch, our first stretch goal, but you know, we, we want to make it, you know, this is, a, this is like my, uh, my chance of immortality, you know, is this book. Right. My very first thing. So. Yeah, you know, it's very, it's less all your years. years of hard work. That's yeah, amazing. but it's a real small print run, and that's another thing. You know, when people see books and say it's a sixty-four page book, a forty-eight page book at twenty-five dollars, um, some people scoff at that. But when, but then again, you'll get these books. They're signed by the creator, you know, and there's maybe what a thousand of them made, two thousand of them, right. you know, as opposed to these Marvel and DC and Marvel and DC books. You know that they had this their variant cover and their special variant cover. There's ten thousand of them, twenty thousand of them. Right. Um, plus, then we throw all that cool swag in and stuff like that, and yeah. and uh, it's 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 it. You see the love in it. You know, you really do. And yeah, the, the, and that's the other thing is is that uh, it, we we touched on it a little bit, but um, you know, you, you're cutting out all these middlemen, and that, it, it's a direct relationship between the creator and and the reader and the fans. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, you know, it, it's almost like the way it felt when you read a letters column in the old comics, you know, yeah. and the letters column, like you felt like, oh, you know, I'm talking with Stan or Jack or whatever. But that was really false. It wasn't true. Um, but this is real. I mean, uh, you know, when you back a campaign you and you get your updates and stuff like that, if you got a question that goes directly to the creator and yeah. he answers you directly. Yep. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And, uh, and, and again, you know, it's me and Debbie, it's me and Debbie. And we got a great team, mm -hmm. um, that helps us out, you know, with the fulfillment and all. And, and like I said, Niall made the video Niles makes, you know, I, I poor Niall, he does so many favors for me. Um, but I got Niall involved and, and Mindy Lock, you know, our designer and, and you know, our other designer, all the work they do. And, but we're really just this tiny group, you know, of, of people, friends and family. And, and, uh, but we're doing these, making these books, man. It's so great. Yeah. So great. Yeah. When, when you're wearing that shirt or you're holding that book, yeah. you know, it's, uh, you know, it, it's tangible. It's real. Yeah. Yeah. And again, you know, we wanted to lower the price, but it's, again, it's almost 500 pages and it's just expensive because I'm not, I can't make, can't afford to make 5,000 of them. Mm -hmm. We're hoping to sell 500 of them. Yeah. You know, and when you get to a, a print, a print run that low, it's, it's expensive. It, it really Well, is. when you think about it though, I mean, $60, for 300 pages? It's five, oh, 488, almost 500 okay, pages. Okay, let's say 500 pages. You know, 60 bucks for 500 pages. I mean, you know, most of the crowdfunding things are 64 pages yeah. and they're $25. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, you, it's more than four times the amount uh, for... It's almost, it's know, almost it's, yeah, it's like nine times, <laughs> eight times bigger. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And uh, so it was actually a, a really good deal. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. And, and it's again, just the love that's been going into this and all that we've, we've been doing all summer working all summer, all spring working on it and getting it just where, just where we want it. And, uh, I'm, I'm psyched, man. I'm nervous. I really am nervous because we got to sell at least 500 of these to, to be afford you know, to be able to, to print them, but hopefully right. God willing, knock on wood, we will. I, 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 I think you're just experiencing the pre-launch jitters that we all get. Yeah, you know, when we're, we're second guessing, but you know what? You've been good to your backers. Your backers are good to you. Uh, they follow you along. You, you've got a long history with this character going back to the 90s. You have a very rock solid fan base. And I think they're going to come out in droves for you uh, on this and that um, you're going to be good to go. Yeah, you know? I hope so. From your lips to God's ears, brother. I'll say that. I'll say that. <laughs> well, that's a good question. Leg Kick wants to know. Um, how much is shipping for a book that big? Um, Debbie did the thing because it, it depends. Um, let me go to my page. Hang on a second. Uh, if I go to the Indiegogo page, uh, because it, it's it varies. But we're shipping everything priority mail too. These books are all shipping priority mail. Um, my campaigns. I'll let you know in a second. 
Yes, I got it. And then I get nervous every time I look at the, um, let me put it over here. I get nervous every time I click on it because I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> you know, I don't want to mess it up. Right. You know, like, oh, did I just erase something? Because Debbie and I were doing that. We were both on on the same account. And oh. I, we were, I was adding things and fixing things and she was taking them away. I mean, so she was adding stuff. So then I would be like, okay, you want to save it? I'm like, yeah. And I would save it before, like, but it wouldn't register what's all the work she did. So it would just save. Cause it thought like one person's working on it, even though we're on two computers. <laughs> it's like, will you get off? Are you just, I just lost an hour's worth of work. So, okay. So U S is $16 in shipping and that's U S that's U S post office priority mail. Canada, unfortunately is going to be $45. And that's the cheapest we can get it. Um, Cause it's just so expensive unless somebody wants to come and meet us at the up in Buffalo and we'll drive <laughs> and give it to you. And then, and uh, that's our cost. Um, I don't know what the European one is going to be or, or Asia, but that gets up there. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it's a big book. It's a real big, heavy book. So we're going to ship it all prior U S priority mail. So you get the book in two days. Well, how did you, how did you determine what shipping would be if, I mean, or, or rather, how did you determine what it's going to weigh? Uh, I think Debbie did it with a printer. I think she, oh. the printer told us how much a comparable book would weigh. Roughly okay. and probably added a little more weight, but you know, you ship priority, you ship those priority boxes, uh, you know, that it could be any weight that's 15 yeah. bucks off the bat. So that doesn't include the bubble wrap. We're going to buy all the packing right. stuff. Um, so it's, uh, you know, we're really not charging for shit. We're just, it's really the U S postal price of that right. post office charges. We're not making any money, which we never do anyway, but, uh, we're not making any money off of it or anything. It's just, that's the, the, the priority mail. Um, price of, of what it costs to ship something priority mail. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and why aren't you sending it um, media mail? Cause it's a book. I, I don't know. It's not my, it's, it's above my pay grade. Oh, okay. Let, you know, let her do that. I, you know, I, 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 I have enough arguments with her over what t-shirts we should do and what they should look like <laughs> math and stuff like that. I, don't, <laughs> I ain't even getting involved in that. Oh, that's good. It, it yeah. frees up your your little mind to uh, yeah. focus on the story kind of. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because I'm I'm working. Like I said, I'm adding 20 pages of Miss Fury. Um, I'm working on Sheet Sakura, you know, drawing that off of Peros's script, and uh, and then putting this old this bad boy together. And I got commissions to do. I I still owe three commissions. I'm sorry, guys, from Haikyo. I'll get them done in a few weeks. I promise. Just give me like two weeks, two two and a half weeks. I'll have them done. But they're big. They're like seven hundred fifty dollars commissions. Oh, so okay. You know, and that qu cover quality commission. You know what it's like when you do it. So it's got to be really good. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's not like the three hundred dollar ones, two hundred dollar ones you do at a commit at a commit at a convention, which you, you you do. You know, you put you're all into it, but that's yeah. like a full day's work. Oh yeah. And uh, but you know, it's it's a couple days. And, yeah, and we're also selling because I don't want to sell it. We're selling the only Shiwei the Warrior. Uh, original cover art that will ever will sell ever again, and uh, and that's the the way the warrior number four cover, and uh, that original art. But I don't want to sell it, so I put up. I don't know, it's like ten ten thousand dollars. If somebody wants one of the Shiwei the warrior covers, you know, because you're not getting any of the others, that that's ten grand. There's right. Hey, you know <laughs> what? That, could be, that really could be a good investment. Yeah, I don't want to sell it, but if somebody wants to buy it. Yeah, you know, that's right. everything has a price, right? Everything has a price, right? Graham, right. it's like Graham Nolan going to a Comic Con. <laughs> yes, Deborah is going to uh, to Terrific Con. Okay, there and we go. Said that Mrs. Nolan isn't coming. No, Mrs. Nolan is not coming. Uh, now, can, I stay with her, with pumpkin. can I Facebook message her and tell her to come? <laughs> you can because you're gonna be so lonely. It's a long drive. It is that that is a long drive. I'm, I'm doing Mitch a solid by driving instead of having him fly me and. You know, I'm trying to help out, you know, um, get the convention going because he was nervous about how it was going to be and everything. So, you know. Oh, it's going to be huge. People are looking for it. I think um, so. forward to it. I think conventions next year, I think the New York Comic Con is going to be huge. I mean, they're already sold out of Thursdays and Sundays and uh, the Thursday and, and Sunday or Friday and Sunday or something. But mm -hmm. I think I think next year, like San Diego Comic Con, boom, I think that's going to be huge. And you don't get out there much anymore, do you, buddy? I hate San Diego Comic Con. I, I never go out. The last time I was out there was for the uh, Ink Pot Award. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't you hang out with uh, you, you hang out with Tito Tollers, don't you? To what? With what? Tito Tollers. Tito Tollers. That's <laughs> what you hang out with. Got to hang out with Gucci. 
Get in trouble it, out there. You know, it's just, you know, the same thing with New York Comic Con. It's just too much. It's just yeah. too many people stuffed into a small area. Uh, and I'm not, uh, I just don't like that. You know, I, I don't have a fear of crowds. I just don't like crowds. You know, it's just, yeah. uh, I find it, you know, more hassle than it's worth. Sensory overload, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's just not worth it. I could I could make more money staying home and you know. Oh yeah, you know, working on some new you, backers. <laughs> yeah, you could put up ten sketch covers for for a, you call it, you know. Oh yeah, you call it Compass Con, and you do you know and and I'm putting up ten sketch covers or ten commissions. Boom. There you go. And and that you know, and you don't have to travel anywhere. Get up at four in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The thing I like about Terrific Con is it's so wide open. Yeah, you know, it's very wide open. Plenty of space to roam around, and then if you need to get a break, you can, you can go outside, like where we go for our cigars. You know, we yeah. can do that, or or there's plenty of restaurants and things you can go into, and you know, lots well, of. Got, they, and they got that great cigar bar there. If you hit that place, so this is cigar bar stuff. there. Yeah, cigar bar, yep, cigar bar in, in Mohegan Sun. Why didn't we go to that last time? We had cigars. Right, but you can bring them in, can't you? You smoke in a cigar bar. Yeah, you can smoke in a cigar. I think. You right. So why, why, why were we out in the wind trying? I don't to... know. I, I don't think we knew that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't think we knew. That. I, I didn't know, yeah. or it wasn't there at that time. I mean, that's like three Maybe. years, four years ago. Yeah. So what? Hey, so, uh, you, so you guys in the chat? No, we went outside to uh, it was me and Billy and um, uh, Domo and uh, Rock. Uh, and Rock and we, uh, Billy brought some um, Jack Daniels. And uh, we had our cigars out there, and it was really windy, and yeah. uh, none of us had a torch. So we had we 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 bumped some matches from somewhere, and we're trying to light these things, and the wind kept blowing them out and everything. So Billy says, "All right, let me see if I can go find somebody with a with a, a lighter." So he goes into the casino, he comes out with this French Canadian girl That's and right. her boyfriend or friend or whatever like that, and she is well oiled. <laughs> Hold up. And she comes out and she's got she's got a lighter and we're like so we lit one up and you know and everybody uh, lit the cigars up and she's like well oh I've never never tried a cigar before uh, and and we're like oh you want to try one so we give it to her and she takes this long drag on it and before we know it we can say anything the smoke's coming out her nose she's just blowing it out her nose like she would a cigarette. <laughs> uh, don't inhale it. Don't do that. Yeah, we're like, oh no, no, don't do that. Yeah, I think you turned green too. It, it didn't. It didn't even phase her. She's yeah. like, oh, we're not supposed to do that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, so this time we'll go into the cigar bar and we'll smoke like gentlemen. That's right. And That's uh, right. and and uh, you know, because we you know we have to keep up with the lifestyle we've you know become accustomed to. That's and right. That we have uh, appearances to keep up. Yes, with. yes. And with our Hawaiian shirts. Are you wearing? Are you bringing Godzilla? I'm what definitely bringing Godzilla. All right, cool. All right, I got a, I got a couple of them. Let's see which one I bring. I'm not quite sure yet, but that's where you burn my arm. <laughs> Your cigar. That's a great picture. That is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too too much fun, brother. Too much yeah. fun. You know what? I got to see if I can find that. Hold on a second here. I think I got it. You got it. All right, all right. Let me go uh, run and get. I'm gonna get my little uh my little thumbnails real quick. What I was working on too. Let's see here. <laughs> Oh, there it is. I got it. Oh, you got it? All right, cool. I got it. All okay. right. Here All we right. go. I'm look at that. That is no Photoshop. That is the glow of that. That is. It's like, oh my God. What are you doing? <laughs> look, look at the eyes. That's normal back there. Like, eyes. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That is so funny. In, folks. She just went in. Like, I'll burn this bastard's arm. <laughs> How dare you tell me that you, you don't like Bane? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oops. This character, and that was it. Next thing I know, my arm is on fire. <laughs> Good times, man. I'm looking forward to seeing you. We'll have a great time. Oh, absolutely. And uh, like I said, we'll hit some places. We'll get something to eat. And we'll go hit that cigar bar and we'll sit and we'll chill. And and uh, we'll see. I think it's going to be – we're going to have some fun. There's going to be a lot of interesting people there. I'll tell you that. Pros. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're going to be gloating or looking for whatever. So that's going to be it's going to be fun, buddy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it. And it's going to be a great show, and we're going to be busy. And Mitch puts on one of the best conventions in the entire country yeah. by far. It's a great location because it's right yeah. in that corridor, that tri-state corridor. So you get people from Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts, all coming up 95 there. Yep. Or down 95. <clears throat> Maine, yeah. you know, New Hampshire. Yeah, New Hampshire. And then if we get if, if and if we get if we get the munchies, they got that Peppy's Pizza Parlor. They're open till like three in the morning. <laughs> but what kind of food do you like, Graham? What are you What are you looking at? What What are we What are we looking at, Graham Nolan? Well, for me, you know, I I I, I uh, eat, eat eat like a keto diet. So I'm eating, you know, protein and fats, no carbohydrates. So I'm not drinking beer. Okay. Pizza. Okay. Good. Okay. Well, yeah. you know, no, but um, but beef, you know, meat, uh, salads, you know, seafood, any of that stuff, bourbon. I'm there good. you go. Yeah, I'll drink my scotch. Well, I'm uh, I'm planning on starting that myself. So I'll tell you the places that we got here, Graham. And uh, I'm going to share my screen, all right? I did Why it. not? This is bro. Oh, you, you are a one. Am I? Oh, I haven't stopped sharing my screen. That's why. I'm like, how are you? You're so fast on this, doing this. <laughs> but here we go, Graham. All right. So we got, what's our restaurants here? Restaurants, entertainment. Uh, yeah. dine, dine, dine and shop. And shop. There dine. we go, dining. All right, Graham Nolan. Let's look what they got here. What the hell is it? The Wait, dining? that ain't right. That ain't right. Should be crickets. What is this? All right, here we go. Dining dining go. All right. Tao. Okay. Asian Bistro. Get mm -hmm. some meat there. Yeah. And we got uh, 46 options. All right. Yeah. So oh, there it is, Clay Pipe Cigar Bar. There, where is that? Where is that? Uh -oh, there you go. Look closed. at that. It's closed. It says closed. All right. Well, we'll bring our own cigars then. Yeah, I'm definitely bringing. Yeah, uh, Balo Italian Restaurant. Mm -hmm. You got um, what else we got? Well, we'll figure it out, right? Yeah, Me? there there's a, there used to be like a. Bobby Flay's Steakhouse was yeah, there. Yeah, Bobby Flay's right? Steakhouse closed down, but now he's got the Bobby Flay's Burger Play Palace, but that's just a burger joint. I yeah, think. yeah. There's, I'll bet you there's another steak joint in there. There's got to be, dude. Nouvelle, that sounds nice. Let's see what Nouvelle is. Oh, look, come on, Graham. No, look at this place. That is Bobby Flay's old place. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's that bar that yeah. uh, we were sitting at. That, that one is the night. bar right by the elevators. Yep, right. exactly right. Okay. The sky rise food. Well, we'll figure it out, right, brother? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll find something. Tom's Urban. Todd's English Tuscany. What the hell is it? Oh, Todd English is Tuscany. I don't know who he is. I don't either. Some weirdo. Yeah. It used to be Jimmy Buffett's place used to be in there, too. That's right. That might still be there, Margaritaville. Yeah. But uh, well, anyway. All right. So, like that. so yeah. anyway, so if, uh, I know this is story tells I'd mentioned before if you want to do this. I don't know if you do this when you write, but I do this a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I do my little you do, thumbnail. You do what, thumbnails, huh? Yeah, of what's happening <laughs> in the pages. And then I do it bigger. So it depends. And I have all my little notes in there. And there's. Okay. You know, and uh, it, they're really rough, but I, you know, I can figure it out. And we got P47 Thunderbolts coming. They blow up some stuff. and But that's it. I don't know if you work that way yourself. But I, oh, you do. Oh, look at, look at yours. Yeah, see, I, I print out this template and then I I, I lay uh, there we go, I lay out the page mm -hmm. and then to the right of it I have notes and dialogue and then I uh, I put down basic ideas of what I want to say and then when I sit down at the uh, uh, keyboard you know that's when I'll uh, expand upon the dialogue and stuff like that. Well, that's nice. And I wanted to ask you a question about that particular page because you showed it. With yeah. that car that's in the panel three in the upper corner yeah. of it, um, I know you do stuff. You do your roughs digitally. Did yeah. you did you do you use like models like um, Google SketchUp or anything yep. like that for your cars? And, yep. and so you kind of do a rough and then you found a car like a 32 Ford or something. Yep. And then you you kind of positioned it in there and then you it's drove a, around it's a 50, it. 55 uh, Chevy truck. OK, cool. Yep. Cool. Which I that that, that I, I put in there. I do the same thing a lot of times with guns too. If it's a gun I don't own, yeah, uh, I'll try to get some type of a model for it. So, uh, 
Uh, but definitely cars. I like to use it because uh, airplanes, helicopters, yeah. that kind of stuff. Because I hate to draw that stuff. Well, you're you know? never gonna you're never gonna draw an airplane to look like something like SketchUp can do for you. Yeah, there's no way. Yeah, there's no way. Unless um, you're Russ Heath. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. and I'm not Russ Heath. So no, unfortunately, not. You never got to spend a lot of time at the Playboy Mansion. No, I did not. Yeah. Speaking of guns, look what I got a hold of. Look at this. This is the 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 um, man man liquor Carcano, the Kennedy Killer, the, the Lee Harvey Oswald. No shit. Rifle without the scope. My friend's dad gave it to me. Is that a Russian raid? No, it's Italian. Carcano. Yeah. Oh, nice. I haven't fired it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. It's it's the carbine, mm -hmm. it's the cavalry one, and and uh, this is a. Um, a 2438, I think it's called, or 1893 24. And, um, what's his name? Oswald had the 38 model, oh, okay. which was, um, I think it's a little bit longer or something like that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I can't wait. I'm looking forward to shooting this bad boy. That's cool. So, I got this, uh, this new tactical store opened up down the road for me. So, I go in there to check it out. Um, and I was pricing out like AR 15s, um, because. Before the election, you couldn't get them. I mean, if you, if you found them online, they were over a thousand bucks a pop. You yeah, know, if you could find them, but everybody was sold out. This place must have ten or fifteen of them on the wall. Yeah, but, price, but yeah, those are yeah, being in New York State. You're yeah. not going to, be able to buy them, but they have fix. They probably have the fix magazine. They do. It's a yeah. pink magazine. Yeah, and you got to you got to load them for the top. Yep. Yep. And. Um, yeah, I'll talk to you about it after. I'll yeah, yeah they, they have speed loaders yeah. for them, but still, that sucks. But yeah. that's not even the cool part. The cool thing is, <laughs> is they had flamethrowers. Oh my god! Like, <laughs> Rick Dalton's. <laughs> I mean, there was these these. So I, I had them take them out. You know, I got I, I got to see this thing, and it's got this canister on the top, and you open it up, and you put gasoline or diesel in it if you want it to be more like napalm, <gasps> and uh. You, there's a there's a little canister like a, a propane canister on it so that you have a continuous flame right so that when you press the trigger and it shoots it out it hits that flame and it goes you can shoot this thing 30 feet oh and i'm like well what would you use this for he goes brush clearing <laughs> there you go there you go perfect <laughs> rick F. and dalton there you go buddy. that's it that's it. I, I mean, well, I yeah, went home and I told, Julie, I told Julie about it. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I was pricing out the AR-15s. And she's like, yeah, all right, whatever. And I said, but but I really want to get this flamethrower. She goes, no. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> that, that, out of the question, you're not getting a flamethrower. So you what would you do about getting a – But if, if I was you, what I would get is, uh, if you can, get an M1 Garand. The battle rifle, you know, uh -huh. the, the M1. Get that. Um, the carbine's great. I know you have the carbine in, in uh, Alien Alamo, or or we talked about it. I haven't seen it yet. I talked about it. I didn't yeah. use a carbine. Yeah, you didn't use it. But the M1 Garand, you know, is that, I mean, I got to, my, I got I the bullets and stuff. But that World War II battle rifle that, you know, Patton called it the greatest battle battle implement ever, you know, mankind's mm -hmm. ever produced. And uh, you you load load from the top with that end block clip of those yep. eight, 30 odd yep. six good old Kentucky walnut, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and good old you, you know U.S. steel and Kentucky walnut, you know, and uh, kraut killer. That's what I like. Kraut killer. That's my favorite rifle. It sounds like it comes from creators that come up with books like Giant Size Two Fisted Manly Tail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. maybe that's a cool stretch goal when you come out with it that you can have like these ads, like the old, you know, the the old um, uh, what are, what's it called Ruger? The remember the Ruger gun gun uh, ads, you know, and you're doing black, white, and red. Yeah. But you could you could talk about guns for sale. You know, only dollar ninety nine for the right M1 you know, Garand surplus battle rifle. You know, well, like nineteen fifties ads. You know, things like that. He, he, here's the coolest promotion thing I'm going to do with that book. Instead, you're going to love this. Every one of the comics is going to come with a mini flamethrower. Nice. It, it, it's not a real flame or not a flamethrower, um, a, a mini um, um, a fire extinguisher. Oh. Like a toy, like a toy fire extinguisher. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. reason is because this book is going to be so toxic that if you gave it, it's toxically masculine. If you give it to an SJW, they will burst into flames. And you so, <laughs> so, so that's why there's going to be this little reminder for you not to share this with SJWs because, you know, 
So there you go. And you know what? That's a good point. And then when you hit uh, when you hit your hundred thousand dollars stretch goal or one hundred fifty, then you have to also have the, the little violin, so you can give him the little violin. For yeah, the little violin. <laughs> <laughs> uh sorry we took over comics not sorry no <laughs> graham you're doing work of your career right now chinu was fantastic and preview after alien alex phenomenal. thank you brad i appreciate I that i really do so when do you think uh the two-fisted manly tales will come out um well um depends on when i can uh get all my scripts and, and art together but it, i'm hoping to have it out be uh before the end of the year nice you know perfect you know, or, or at least uh, at least uh uh have the campaign starting yeah um, you know by by before the end of the year yeah, so sure. it, it will overlap with with um uh alien alamo but mm -hmm. it doesn't affect the my uh alien alamo chinu line of comics that i'm doing this is something that i'm doing as a publisher that i'm hiring people to do and i'm going to write some stories for it too but i'm not drawing the stuff um but i'm publishing it you know so it's just another um quiver or arrow in my quiver so to yeah. speak um that i want to do and will any of your stories be in the same continuity as the chinu and alien alamo in Two Fisted Manly Tales? Yeah. Well, no. yeah were you, no, 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 no. The, 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 that's just a separate, uh, separate type of thing. Oh, okay. I, I, I thought about doing a, a short Joe Frankenstein story in it, and I may still. And, and if that's the case, then the answer would be yes. But I'm not thinking about doing that right now. I'm thinking of just doing Two Fisted Manly Tales of Men versus um, the elements, animals, other men, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And you got Bo Smith writing for you, right? Bo's going to be writing, Chuck's writing, Baron's writing. That's great. Kevin Grievous is writing, and me. Nice. Yeah. Bo gave Bo gave me this one Christmas. Oh, nice. My, my he Italian loves knife. Knife. Yeah, yeah, my Italian knife. It's a utility knife. So I have this way. I open up all when I do my unboxing with Billy Tucci. I use the Bo Smith. Uh, that that looks like a cheese knife with that square end. I don't know what they're tying, so it could be. It's like yeah. a utility <laughs> knife, so you never know with them eye ties, right? Right. Right. Hang on. Yeah, you you get a little block of cheese, you get some uh you know wine, some you know Chianti. Yeah, because they're not stabbing communists with this. I mean no. it is good, but it would hurt. I but think you're right, you know? slash. It's yeah. sharp. It's 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 razor sharp, but it, and then this one's a can opener. So you know what, Graham, you might be right. This just might be for them to eat. Because you got the can yeah. opener here, and yeah. then you get a little cheese, you cut your cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, good times, bro. Good times. Yeah, yeah, fun stuff. So, uh, well, before we sign off here, bud, is there anything else you'd like to mention? Anything you want to get out there to? Uh, no, um, no, just thank you so much. Uh, if anyone wants to pledge for Shihaikyo, we're all done with all the fulfillment. I mean, new orders have come in this week, and they'll, they'll, you, you'll get them out in the next. We'll get them out in the next few weeks. Uh, we got a big deluge of, of orders this week. Uh, I think maybe 30, 40 of them. Um, maybe more, but, uh, that book, that campaign closes tomorrow, I think at 6 PM and then at 7 PM, we go live tomorrow on the pop XP for the release of, uh, for the launch of, uh, the she on the bus edition volume number one at 8 PM. Then we have the professionals tomorrow, uh, we're on, talk about Rocketeer, uh, on, on, you know, on the pop XP, my channel. And then, um, hopefully, like I said, I'll be on with Ethan at nine 30 into the evening. And we're thinking about Friday for Debbie is going to actually, uh, I think about almost close to 50 people bought Debbie a drink, like buy grandma beer. Right. And Debbie, we put that in when Debbie's doing the fulfillment. And I think she's going to make good on it Friday night. Oh my I think God. we're going to, not 50 drinks, but she said she'll take 50 sips. But oh, okay. fun. Debbie and I will be up here in my studio and uh, I'll have her on, on one of my other chairs and we'll just, let's get Debbie liquored up. That uh, about the commissions, Nicholas. Um, <clears throat> I can, I'll talk to you about that, Nick. I, I owe three of the commissions. Yours is the first one. All right, buddy. So we'll, we'll um, uh, I'll take care of that. It's 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 all in the pipe. I got it all over here on the paper, and um, I'm on them. So there'll be three. There, there will be. I'm sorry, Nicholas. There will be commissions. With, there's only going to be three commissions on the, or four commissions on the um, the omnibus two. Uh, but I, you know, what it was I, I, I was a little behind on the commissions because of Miss Fury, and then because of uh, 
of, of uh, I wanted to get this book done. I wanted to get these books done. And, and I'm already, I'm already on page 15 of my, of the Sakura book that is uh, going to launch in October. And this is our whole process. It, our whole strategy now is to start soliciting books when they're completely done before they, before we solicit that book, that book is done and ready to go to press. So I'm psyched. Yeah, Eric, I think so. I, that's why I talked to Ethan. Um, so we'll see. Um, he'll let you know, I guess. So, <laughs> it's up to Fingers him. Crossed. He's doing me a favor. Yeah. So it's up to him. So, and, uh, and that's that man. All so, right. All right. So guys, uh, sign up on Billy's, uh, uh, link for, uh, his, his signup sheet. Yep. If you haven't already done so, and you'll get all the skinny on, uh, the new omnibus when that, when that, uh, well, it's launching tomorrow. So um, actually, but it might, it just might open a little bit early for our uh, backers. Just there you go. Get on that list. It, just, it just might. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I get my way. We'll see that. I'll yeah. talk to Debbie about it. She's, 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 she's got a lot more ethics than I, I'm like, let's, let's, let's launch it for the, for the pre-launch people, the people signed for the pre-launch list. Let's let it, let's open it a little bit, a little bit before them. Let's just keep it quiet and just give them so a they little grab all the cool commissions and stuff like that before they, right? they sell out. So. Okay. All right. All hey, right. Thanks. Smith. Look at that. This is Bo Smith. Hey. There's nothing skinny about Billy. <laughs> Man, that's a shit short. Not like your legs, buddy. <laughs> yeah, that's but, true. Uh, I've seen Bo's legs. <laughs> yeah. So, so Graham figured out, Bo, why the knife is, is like this. The, it's for cutting the cheese. Yeah, you, you gave Billy a cheese knife. You gave me a cheese knife. Uh, that that wasn't a gift. That was Bo getting rid of something he didn't want. I'm no, not, this is a great I'm not idea. eating that damn cheese. No, it's also good for cutting Genoa salami. You know, cut the salami, the you know, the piece of salami. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Bo liked the leg time. <laughs> Uh, good time. Hey, I'm Italian. I can say that. That's right. <laughs> Half Italian, fifty percent. So, all right, guys. And, and Irish too, and and everything else. Yeah, I got. Uh, I got. What do I have? Fifteen percent Irish and twenty five percent Scottish, and only uh, only five percent English. I got two percent Norwegian. Shit, Graham. If I had three percent, I'd probably be five foot ten. <laughs> There's always hope. Sheep's foot cutting rope. There he is. That's it. It's for cutting rope. <laughs> All right. I don't know. Surprise. Bo Smith is up. Uh, was today Bo, Bo and Beth's yeah. anniversary or yesterday? Oh, look at that. And, and 100% ugly. 100% ugly. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but I got Debbie Steffens back in college when all the other guys want her. I got her. That's true. It's all because I had you, were, you were truly the teen sensation back I then. I was back then. I was teen sensation. Now I'm nothing. Hey, Greg, <laughs> you notice that the names aren't showing up? This is the second stream I did today, and there's no names. Well, I see all the names. No, no, the name on our screens. Uh, right? Yeah. Well, you mean Bo Smith take, like that? If you, no, no. If you take Bo Smith. Oh, that, that's why. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. I like this, though. I like the blue. It looks like that's a. it's usually um, white, right, the name. This looks really nice like this. Yeah, I, I, I used to use orange because when I first set up the channel, it was uh, for the 31 Days of Monsters. So I was using orange for, for Halloween and I kept the orange. And then uh, I forget what what show it was. I changed it to blue. I like it. I like this little this little runner here, Danny, whatever they call it. scroll. Yep. Yeah. Well, thank you. Anyway. People pop in, you know, uh, they can see what it is. Yeah. Well, I'm going to gym tomorrow. So a boy. And lift, uh, some iron, lift up heavy shit and put it back down. That's it. Feeling good Wait, about it. Do it Feeling again. Good. good. So, all right, guys. Graham, thank you so much hey. for having me on. Thank You're you. You're welcome, buddy. Guys. And of all course. you guys that supported, she returned the warrior. She hike yo, zombie sama. Uh, and now this book. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you yeah. guys all tomorrow for sure. Great. So, Thanks a lot, guys. Right. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye now. Thanks, Graham. <laughs>